1939, and we dealt with bed bugs up until 1972. And then we stopped getting calls completely until 97. And then from 97 to today, we've gone from the point of a couple calls every couple months to a point where right now I'll get anywhere from 25 to 125 calls a day um, on bed bugs. Okay. Um, we're going to cover an awful lot. Uh, the goal is to go through it in about an hour and then um, stick around and answer all your questions. Um, it's not meant to make you nervous. It's really meant to make you uh, comfortable with it by the time we're done. So I'm going to show you an awful lot as we go through. I've got two videos that I've borrowed over the years. One from National Geographic. It's very hard to, hear, uh, to, to uh, see the pictures, but it's great to hear what they're saying. Um, and then the second one is from Minneapolis. Yeah, it's very hard to hear what they're saying, but some really great pictures. So, you can't get one that does both. So, let me get started with that. Remember your mother tucking you in at and saying, Don't let the bed bugs bite before she turned off your nightlight? You probably thought she was kidding. Well, she wasn't kidding. It's just before dawn. You're in the deepest sleep you'll be in all night, and the bed bugs are ready to strike. Bed bugs have lived in caves and sucked the blood of bats and your prehistoric ancestors. When we left our caves, so did they. They sneak in through the tiniest cracks, the most minuscule openings. They even come in through an outlet. They know where you are, because they can sense the carbon dioxide you exhale. You've got something they want. Blood. When they get within sucking distance, they use heat sensors on their antennae to find the juiciest place to drill for plasma. An exposed limb is like a flashing neon sign for a free, all-you-can-suck buffet. If nobody does anything, thousands of them can infest a single bedroom. Like a safe cracker opening a vault, the bed bug finds the perfect spot to hit the blood bank. Bed bugs have to drink blood to stay alive and breathe. And Mother Nature is on the side of the bed bug. The bug administers an anesthetic so you don't wake up, as well as an anticoagulant, so your vital life essence will gush freely from your veins. And here's a cheery fact. A bed bug can drink three times its weight in a single meal. Talk about your bingo. Here's something else to brighten your day. If you've got a serious infestation, you might get bitten 500 times in a single night. You might get anemia, unlike the bed bug. All done. See you tomorrow, sucker. No, I guess it's the sucker. You're the sucky. All right, the video told you a lot. They told you at the prehistoric, they've been around since the day of the caveman. They only feed on uh, blood, mammals and birds. They don't hop, jump, or fly. They have to crawl. Um, they, uh, what else? Let me tell you that. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Let me get another X. What's that? Yeah, they come through outlets, cracks. Oh, yeah, no, we'll show you all that. Um, I think of the video, yeah, they, they'll, um, they like the wiring in the walls because it's like highway going between units. It's very easy to crawl through. These guys are paper thin, but I'll show you all that. I'm going to give you a real quick overview on the history. I'm going to explain why they're back. If you have a good understanding of why they're back, you're going to have ways to reduce the risk of bringing them home. That's the main part of that. Then we're going to get into positive ID. You got a lot of people treating for bed bugs when they're not. They may be something else, or potentially they're not. Um, so it's an it's a issue that uh, you guys may see people screaming and calling you all upset about having bed bugs in their homes, when actually it's carpet beetles. Something very simple. So we'll show you those. I'm going to show you where they hide and then what the signs are. Because you go running into a building or into a home, um, you're not going to uh, normally see the bed bugs unless they're real bad, but you're going to see the signs. So I'll show you a lot of that. The approach to treatment, I'll address all of those and uh, some of the issues with that. The mattresses, whether we keep them, throw them out. Medical, I'll show you what the bites look like and the issues with the medical stuff. Employer, employee, and legal issues, we'll go through that pretty quick. This next video, I'm just going to talk over. 
It's uh, from Minneapolis. It is in one local it's an older couple that has a small home. Um, case of bed bugs he has and they've been treating it themselves for two years. So North this is an Adam's best control. The basement, the attic, and um, everything in there. Treating it. The home is so infested, the bugs no longer have a place to hide. Care Levin's Boyd Hoopert takes us inside. It is, in many ways, the all-American home, well-kept and tidy. It could belong to your grandmother. Seams of the mattress. But there is trouble beneath the sheets. And we're seeing all types of uh, you know, these white adults. Ones, the ones that have basically all the bed bugs are full of life. Bed bug activity here. An so elderly woman sleeps here. Check out this outlet. Eight inches or so above this outlet. At night, bed bugs feed on her. In fact, you can see some <laughs> blood stains probably from her. Todd Lisi of Adams Pest Control estimates the bugs have been active for more than two years. This is definitely the worst I've seen. An elderly man sleeps in this room in the same Minneapolis home. This is fecal matter. All your dark spotting, so you can just see the large numbers of bed bugs. They had tried to gain the bees, ripping up carpets and spraying pesticides. The over-the-counter bombs and whatnot. But a look inside this room in the bedroom closet shows how miserable their do-it-yourself efforts had failed. Bad. This is a ten. While this case is extreme, it is hardly isolated. Once nearly wiped out, bed bugs have waged an aggressive comeback. Bed bugs are hitchhikers, so they spread by getting on your luggage, on, on your clothing. Every year we're seeing 30 to 100 percent more bed bug jobs than the previous year. What Todd just said there is that <coughs> each year they're, they're seeing 30 to 100 percent growth. The Atlantic Pest last year, we had a 354 percent growth in bed bug costs. Um, so, uh, and that's, most of that is in the greater Portland area. So, and you guys would be considered greater, greater Portland. The original um, writing was as early as they can see is 2000 BC. Uh, the thinking is they came over with the colonists. They were actually on the ship's manifest as a pest that was on board. Mm -hmm. So these, you know, these things have been around. They didn't come over like a cruise ship today in a week, or most cruise ships today. Um, you know, they didn't come over a week. It'd take them four to six weeks. So everything would be infested by the time they got here. Um, and then they would go west. So. During the 1920s and the 1930s, in the United States, a third of the residents in the major cities were infested with bed bugs. So this would have been our parents in the larger cities, uh, so for most of us. Uh, a third of the residents, that's a, that's a lot of units uh, dealing with bed bugs. And back then, um, and you guys have probably seen the stories of some of the fires that came up, people were using kerosene and cans underneath the beds, on the legs of the beds, they were hanging dead rabbits on the uh, walls, they were trying all kinds of stuff. So, uh, then you had EPA last January, uh, a year ago this month, said that one in five Americans are either dealing with bed bugs or know somebody that is. And they also said that in the next five years they expect it to happen. Um, and we're seeing that. I mean, how many of you have had to deal with bed bugs at this point? Just a quick show of hands. None of you? I've been in one house where an epidemic was going on. And that's it? Wow, well, I'm surprised. Thank God. Not. It's been in therapy ever since. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't come back from that. Yeah, that happens. You won't sleep for months. <laughs> The, uh, you had the introduction of DDT just prior to World War II. In 1939, they developed DDT. Very good pesticide. It had some problems for us. If we put it down in the building, it wouldn't, it wouldn't break down. 20 years later, it was still active. So you don't have it anywhere now except in Africa. It's got a ban on it worldwide. In Africa, they're going to use it to control malaria, killing mosquitoes. But by 1947, eight years later, after it was developed, bed bugs were already starting to show the resistance. So that's the problem I have today with pyrethroids. But in eight years, they were genetically mutated. You know, Mike, Dr. Potter of the University of Kentucky put bed bugs back in uh, DDT in November of 2007. It has no effect on it. So if I had it today, it wouldn't do any good. Okay? So then we came up with chlorinate, diazinon, Durasban, malathion. These are all products you've heard of and used up until 1996. In 1996, the EPA pulled these products off the market. Particular classes of products had to be removed, and that included these guys. Now, keep in mind, my first call was 1997, and it happened to be a, a, a gross talk. It takes 10 to 12 years for a new product to be developed. Um, five years ago, when we were started doing these education pieces, we were talking at that point that most of the manufacturers hadn't even started looking at new products. Uh, so, we've got a ways to go. 
the EPA sees about 200,000 products a year that are trying to get um, reviewed and approved, and they only approve one or two actually ever make it to market. So it's pretty slim uh, pickings getting to market. International travel is up. In 2002, we had almost 42 million international travelers. By 2009, we were close to 59 million. Portland Harbor a year ago had 71 cruise ships. Five years ago, we had two. Uh, Bar Harbor this summer had 108. These cruise ships are averaging somewhere around three or 4,000 people a piece that we didn't have before. So we're seeing a lot of international travelers. And why this is such a factor is that overseas, they're treated like uh, ticks and mosquitoes for us. They're a common pest. They live with them, they're common. They've had them forever, they never got rid of them. They didn't have in some parts of the world. They didn't have the same chemicals we had to get rid of them. So if you travel overseas today, you need to assume you have bed bugs when you get home. If you go anywhere domestically in the United States, you need to make the same assumption if you're flying. And it's a simple fix. When you get home, before you go in the house, take the suitcase outside, open it up, take the clothes in and put them right in the dryer. Don't even wash them, just throw them right in the dryer. Half hour, high heat. That's the key. The suitcase, same thing. If you can throw it in the dryer, dry it. If you can't, bag it up, tie it tight, a nice bag with no holes, set it aside until the next trip. But keep in mind, any time within the next year or so, there could be live bed books still in there. They'll survive a year or more without food. So they're, they're pretty resilient little guy. Um, but this is huge. No magic bullet. In January of 2010, Dr. Potter's group, the University of Kentucky again, they've done a lot of the research on the bed books. Um, we came out with a report that 88% of the bed bugs they tested to the pyrethroids that we use today uh, were showing some level of resistance to the point that they had genetically mutated. And we were in Chicago in, uh, I think it was September this year, this past fall, and you had you know, 20 of the top researchers around the world were there, and they're saying those figures are way low. This resistance thing is a big deal. It's, it's, the more chemical we use, the less effective it is. When we were doing chemical, I do very little chemical these days. When I did chemical three or four years ago, um, I could do two or three treatments and then be good. Inspect them and, and know we were okay. Um, there are properties I go in today, today and I may have to do seven or eight times and still not have control after that. So the chemical thing is a big deal. Um, these bombs that people are buying, these sprays that they're buying, it's just making the problem worse. Uh, in the sense that um, if they're not applying it in the right areas, they're not using it by the label, they're just going to cause them to spread around and move around. So this, this is kind of a big deal. New York, Detroit, Cincinnati, Chicago, and Philly. This is what Terminex said were their top five cities a year ago. We added in Portland, Maine, because Atlantic Pest is part of Associated Pest, which is 65 companies around the nation. And three of them are based right in the New York area. We do more work than any one of those 65 other companies anywhere in the country. Uh, dealing with bed bugs. Uh, and, and a lot of them will come to us uh, to do their work. So um, we added Portland to the mix. And we are, we're actually estimating by the number of calls we get that our levels in this area are the same as New York City area. Uh, just percentage wise, you know, it, it's about the same. In New York, back in 2004, you had 412 complaints to the health board. By 2009, it was over 11,000. And that represents about 1% of the actual cases. Okay. Tenants don't come forward. There's a stigma. If somebody has bed bugs, and it could be one of the coworkers that you guys work with. They have bed bugs at home. It's embarrassing. You don't want to tell anybody. And it's this false stigma. Everybody thinks it means you have a dirty house, and that doesn't matter. Bed bugs aren't looking for filth. They're looking for blood. So it doesn't matter how clean or dirty the house is, um, you're, you're going to find them anywhere. Um, but this stigma is real. And the issue with it is if somebody holds off just 30 days, they could have the explosion of bed bugs and go from 1,000 to thousands of bed bugs in just 30 days. Um, renting and buying furniture. If, uh, if you're buying any furniture or renting it from, it doesn't matter if it's Aaron's Premier, uh, Renner Center, if it's LL Bean Furniture or Moosehead Furniture somewhere or JC Penny, it doesn't matter who it is. It's the delivery trucks the issue. If they take the old stuff and they bring new stuff on the same truck, somebody else's old stuff is beside yours, and before it even comes off the truck, it's already infested. So the best recommendation I can do here is tell you to pick up your own stuff. Get a truck and go pick it up. Uh, you know, you can pick up a pickup at uh, Home Depot for 20 bucks for a few hours, you know, uh, and grab it and haul it home. 
Um, we see this quite often and around the nation this is a, a big factor. And then yard sales, renewable furniture stores, really all I need to say about that is by the time I'm done, you only got to do one more yard sale. The one to get rid of your stuff and, and you won't shop. <laughs> it's got 30 to 50 percent as high as 70 percent of us show no sign of a wet. Um, if you're over the age of 70, that can jump up to as high as 98 percent. So our parents, our grandparents, 98 percent of them will not show a bite. And the thinking is they were bitten as children and they don't have the same allergic reaction that we have. That's what the thinking is. Um, but when you've got as many as 70 percent of us not showing any bites, that's huge. Because you can have you know, 10 guys or 10, 10 staff staying at the station one night and station's infested and you've only got three showing anything, the other seven aren't, nobody's thinking bed bugs. Because everybody's thinking everybody would show up. And you're not. Family of four sitting in their house, you got one person showing bites, three that aren't. Same thing. I took my family on a conference. We were gone 10 days, stayed at three different hotels. Um, and it was an overseas thing, so we, we were out there a ways. Uh, my youngest 13 year old got chewed up. He was covered in bed bug bites. And I inspected the hotels, I missed them. But I can't even tell you which hotel he got bit at because the bites can be delayed by as much as two weeks. So you have only 30% showing bites. And out of that 30%, then it could be delayed by two weeks before you even see them. So it's a big deal. So everything that I've just talked about are why you're seeing them. It's the jump. Yeah. The chemical, the transporting furniture, the yard sales, the people not knowing that they've got them. Um, you know, somebody starts getting bites or rashes. The last thing they're thinking of is bed bugs, if nobody else in the house is getting bites. So by the time they go to the doctor and get those appointments in, the population is exploding. We've treated everything. Hotels, motels, high rises, low rises, mobile homes, million dollar states. I've done restaurants, grocery stores, I've done fire trucks, I've done fire stations, I've done ambulances, police cars, hospitals, we've done the uh, OR, we've done the uh, uh, maternity wards are a big one, one of the fastest growing segments. Uh, doctors, sporters, we've actually done an operating room, uh, surgery area, uh, funeral home, uh, movie theaters, churches, um, in school buses. We've done a number of school buses at this point, a number of schools at this point. Um, so, you know, any place you can think of, you can pick them up. If you have kids that go to summer camp, my suggestion is don't send them the first week. Okay? Everybody thinks, well, that camp's been sitting there all winter, it's cold, the bed bugs are going to die. We don't get cold enough in May to kill the bed bugs. It's going to be about roughly 15 below for 10 days or so before you're actually going to kill them. We don't get that cold. So what happens is they go all winter, they're hungry, that first week of camp, that first night of camp, and they come up looking. So, and we normally get two or three, maybe four camps every summer. Call us that first night that they open, and you know, as many as 40 or 50 kids are eating bed. Abercrombie Fitch, Victoria's Secrets, Nike Town. This could have read anybody. L.O. Bean, uh, Rennie's, Walmart, J.C. Penney. It doesn't matter. If you're buying something new that somebody else has tried on before you, there's a chance you're going to pick up that fix. Again, it's a simple fix. Take them home, throw them in the dryer, half hour in high heat. Don't throw them in the washing machine. Just throw them in the dryer and, and kill the bugs. Um, very effective treatment. But it could be anywhere. August is the heaviest month of the year for bed bug calls. There's actually a season for bed bugs. April, fall, October. We deal with them all year long just because of the people we deal with. Um, you know, and we deal with a lot of housing authorities. So they don't see the seasonal change. It's always 75 degrees in those places. But you know, that's how it is. But August is your heaviest month. And my thinking is the month of August, you've got everybody trying on clothes for school. All these kids are going shopping for school clothes. So I, I really think that's why you see a big jump on some of Plus the heat. <clears throat> all 50 states are reporting it at this point. Uh, five years ago, you had four, and they were all in the Northeast. Now they all report it. Some of this you guys don't need to see. On the top left, can you? How's that look for you guys? To me, it looks kind of like a white one. I guess that's how it is. Huh? Um, on the left side of the eggs, bed bugs are laid as an egg. Female will lay 200 to 500 eggs in her lifetime, two to three years. And then um, during that, once the egg hatches, that first four to five weeks, they're going to go through four stages, uh, instars. Um, and each time they go through a stage, they shed their skin like a snake, and they have to have a blood meal. And then they become an adult. The last two 
Um, they are adults, they're kind of oval shaped, and then it has a feed that will expand like a mosquito. They just expand out. Um, they're very flat, paper thin. Pa and seriously, paper thin. Any place you can slide the extra piece of paper, come back off behind. Um, microscopic, 3 16 size of an egg uh, uh, apple seed uh, when they're full. So that vial is those adult bed bugs? Yeah. yeah, those would be adult. Those are not full. They will get, they'll look bigger when they're full of blood. The true bugs, they pierce and they suck. They do not have teeth. They do not have a tongue. So some of the chemicals we talked about had to be ingested. These guys don't clean themselves. So they, they don't ingest that way. All they're looking for is blood. They can't poison their blood supply. So that's why they're so difficult to get rid of. Um, so that's important because they also can't chew through a wall. It's got to be an opening in that wall somewhere. There's got to be a crack somewhere where they can go through. Think of them like a mosquito. They can't fly. They're very fragile. Um, they're like a mosquito. But, you know, they, if there's an opening, they'll find their way through. Very much like a German roach. They like to live in a cluster. They give off this aggregate pheromone. It's a scent that says, come on in and join the crowd. They also give an alert for everyone that says, get out of here. And this is when you see them stir. Um, they also have a smell that we can smell. It's like a dead mouse. You know, when you say that, everybody knows in their head what it smells like. We try to explain it. It's pretty tough. Um, but these guys have a smell that's uh, very strong. To me, it smells like somebody's burnt pop tarts. Somebody else will say it smells like really strong chrysanthemum flowers. Um, but once you smell it, you don't forget it. You can walk into a place and know right off the bat. See one on Lincoln's nose there. Uh, he's no thicker than the rim of the penny. Top row is unfed, bottom row is fed. They pick up their color from the blood. So as they go through the stages, they're translucent. You can see the first two, you can literally almost see right through. Um, and then as they get to the older stage, they get that burnt red color. They only feed on blood, mammals and birds. So yeah, your cat, your dog, your gerbil, your guinea pig. Uh, in New York City, they actually think the pigeons are carrying them from building to building as they roost um, on the buildings. But your bats, your mice, your squirrels, cows, chickens, they'll feed on all of us. Okay? Uh, three to 10 minutes to feed. It's not like a tick that'll get on us for three days. These guys get on us for three to 10 minutes and then they want to go high. They're fragile at that point. They want to get tucked away. Um, it's important because they don't eat every day, um, and if they've been on you more than 10 minutes or so, it's probably a tick. They look just fine. Um, the issue with not feeding every day, going a week or two, um, it's kind of important because if you get bit, they normally it's what we call breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's three or four bites right in a row or in a little cluster. It's not going to be one here, one up here, and one over here. It's going to be three or four right in a row. And if you get that today, and then you don't see anything for a week or two, and then you get another one somewhere else. That's an indication you've got a new population just getting started. If you got bites every day, it's too late. They're established somewhere, and you got to get rid of them. The eggs are very, very small. You saw them. You saw the uh, eggs. They have a sticky substance. It's like uh, maple syrup. They'll put it down. They put the egg in it. And if I run a vacuum over it, it may not even come off. That's what makes them so hard to kill up in furniture and that sort of thing, because you can't get to them. One pregnant female in any building in January by June could be as high as 32,000. So they populate pretty quick. There's the adult on the left, and underneath the blue arrow is the uh, uh, nymph in the C-ray room. On the left is a bat bug, on the right is a bed bug. They look identical, but it's really important for us to know. Um, and because you guys deal with the ads, um, it's important that you know. Um, you can have a lot of bat bugs in an attic if it's got bats. Um, and they'll stay up there and feed off in bats for, forever until the bats leave. And then they're going to come down and feed on us. They're, basically, they're just like a bed bug. The difference is the hair on a bat bug is a little bit longer. So we have to identify it because if they're in the attic, I've got to treat the attic. And a lot of times that may mean removing all the insulation and starting from scratch. Uh, that's going to be really expensive in the average house. Is that like the sisters? Sure. Carpet beetles up on the left. You've got a striped carpet, uh, carpet beetle and we have black ones. These will be in your beds. Very common in, in Maine to have these. Um, they shed their skin just like a bed bug. Um, they look just like a bed bug at different stages. 
Spider beetles, um, they'll feed off in rodent feces. Um, squirrels, porcupines, they'll feed off that. Book lice, um, it's the same as a book head mouse, but they're coming out of the books. Somebody's collecting old books at a flea market, you bring them home, you can actually bring lice in the house. Ticks, we see those a lot. The difference between the adult tick and the adult bed bug is, is eight legs um, on the adult and uh, six on the bed on the adult tick. German roaches, very, very small ones, look just like a bed bug. Uh, very hard to tell the difference. And then cobra mites. Uh, in the spring, somebody be mowing, the windows are open, you'd be reading a book, and this little speck shows up and starts crawling across your page. And we go to wipe it away and it smudges red. Everybody's thinking it's a bed bug and it's blood. But actually it's maybe just a clover mite and that's pollen that we see. So we see a lot of this uh, going on out there. And there's all kinds of other pests that look the same. But the big factor here is that they crawl. So these guys have got to crawl to get on there. The nymph feeding, uh, bright red, you can see the difference there. This is the proboscis, so it's a point. Um, there's two needles in there. One will anesthetize it so you don't feel the bite. They numb it, and then they put a blood thinner in it. And then the other one sucks one way. So the, the thinking is maybe this is why, they're not sure, but maybe this is why they're not transmitting disease, because it's a one-way valve. So they carry a lot of diseases, but they're not transmitting at this point. And the back end of this is just the feces. This is the back of a hand. That's just a cluster. Engorged. You can see just how full they get, just like a mosquito. These are the egg sacs. One egg, one bed bug. Not like mosquitoes with a thousand in a raft. This is one and one. 85% of the time, I'm going to find them in your, your beds, your box springs, your mattresses, your frame, uh, the headboard, the footboard. That's where I'm going to find them. Unless you don't sleep in your bed and you sleep in a recliner, which a lot of our senior citizens do. And this is why um, our retirement communities are having an issue, because they let them bring their favorite chair. And that's something they've been sleeping in that for like a year. So the bed bugs are in the chair, so they infest the, the retirement communities when they do it. We've got three, three groups of um, uh, folks that the bed bugs are growing a little faster on. That's the, the nursing homes, the long-term care, the maternity wards, and then office buildings. And office buildings, because they move around, they're moving all the time, you can't really pinpoint where they're at. So, uh, bedding, 52% of the time. I sort of risked the, the north, uh, whole northeast, so I'm not going to tell you what airport. We did a hotel, it was by an airport, 62 rooms out of 150 we found bed bugs in. We used dog teams to sniff them out. Um, out of those 62 rooms, five rooms, the bed bugs were still on the luggage from the people coming from the airport. Hadn't even infested their room yet. Took the luggage out, treated the luggage, the rooms were fine. The other 57, what I did was I separated pillows, comforters, mattresses, box springs, everything. We went back through and basically found out they never cleaned their pillows and the comforters were only done uh, three times a year. Um, and that's where all the bedrooms were. The only about two rooms had to be treated. So, advice. If you're going to a hotel, I remove the headboard, I take it right off, and I inspect it. If they've got bedrooms, a lot of the time that's where you're going to find them. I put it on the opposite side of the room, inspect the wall, I take the skirt off the bottom of the bed. This is what I do. You don't have to do it, but this is what I do. Take the skirt off the bottom of the bed and inspect it. If you don't find any bed bugs, then typically you can stay, and I don't use the comforters. Um, just a thought. Carpet edges, nightstands, chairs, ceilings, uh, your clothing. Uh, we'll go to treat somebody, and they'll, they'll be walking out, and they'll be on their clothes. And they have no idea. They don't even see them. And then uh, appliances, cell phone. You're talking on your cell phone, you plug it in, you set it on the nightstand. And it's got a little carbon dioxide still on it, so warm. You get up in the morning, it could be a bed rug on that face. So we've had it happen. So. Not really making care of it. This is a lot about the box spring. And these, initially, these would have been heavy infestations. This is not considered heavy anymore from what we've seen since. Um, and you got to look at this and think, as you put down a box spring, that box spring is going to stay there for 15 or 20 years. You may flip the, the mattress around and change the sheets and all that, but the box screen can only go on one way. You can see that. Huh? Yeah. When you move the mattress, you can see that. Oh, yeah, that's the underside. I'm sitting on top of the frame. But if you're looking for it, absolutely you'll see it. So, so this is where we get into awesome. using, awesome. use these zippered encasements. And I had a few more of these, but I just dumped everything in the water outside. 
They're zippered in casement, they're made by a protective bed, and this is it's like the iPad, you know, it was the first one, it's the best. This is the protective bed, it's the first, it's gonna be the best. The bed bugs can't bite through it, they can't get in and out of it once it's on. Once it's on, there's a little zip tie to lock the zipper. It goes on the mattress and one on the box screen. Very comfortable. You don't sweat. These aren't vinyl. Um, we'll just pass them around so you can see how it feels. What's the price on those? Uh, the full, the full size bed will run you, I don't know, 80 to 100 bucks to do both to get them done. Um, before you go shopping, call me because uh, we, we treat the fire departments a little different. It's basically a cost. Um, so, the, um, <laughs> the issue with that is if you've got the mattress covers on, it eliminates the huge hiding spots. Because all you're seeing are the ones that are still on the outside. You're not seeing the ones that are up inside the box. Okay? Same thing here, that bed frame. If you've got a bed frame like that, my advice is take it outside and spray paint it white to begin with. So if anything gets on it, they'll see it. And where these crossbars meet the frame, there's a steel rivet right here. If you put a little duct tape or a little felt on that rivet, you won't rip these covers. And then the other thing is these legs are five inches high. We've seen them as much as three inches deep in those legs. So just a little piece of duct tape over the top, they can't chew to get through. It's got to be an opening. So you seal that up and they can't get established in there. All you're trying to do is eliminate hiding spots, like the mattress. The other stitching, the hole the needle made for the thread is big enough for the bed bug to go back and forth. The ones that you see are the ones that are just too full of blood to get back in. Okay? So by putting on those covers, you may eliminate literally thousands of spots where they're getting inside your mattress. Um, it'll make you sleep better. These corners are eliminated. See that one corner? <laughs> one corner right there is 150 bed bucks. Yeah. Keep in mind, 150 bed bugs, they're going to bite you three or four times each. That could represent as many as 600 bites. Bottom of the chair, this is a curtain. The hotel was spraying their own stuff, and what they do is they drove them up. Um, this is a nightstand from the University of Kentucky. Took that picture. Right up there, there's two bed books. It's a little cork feet on a nightstand. It screws down just enough to create a space. And a bedbug likes that feeling of something touching both sides of its body. So they really like the tight spaces. And then a lot of times we will literally find them in the screw heads. And if you're staying at a hotel and we pull that headboard off, the screws that are holding the, the board that they're on, if you check the head of those, that's when you'll find them. A lot of times. This is the eggs, the white, the black is feces. On the ceiling, it looks like mold. The giveaway is mold doesn't move. All right. If it's moving, that's not mold. If you find one by yourself, it's typically a female. They get impregnated by the male anywhere on their body. So they and, and the males will actually attack them and uh, they dehydrate. So they will leave and typically they're five to seven feet away from the cluster. And they'll be starting a new one. So if you find one by yourself, you start looking really? five to seven feet in every direction, you'll find them. Yeah. This is about the unit we did in Portland. Um, you guys could walk into this any day of the week. Seriously. We walk into them all the time. This is all on the wall. These people were handicapped. Two people in wheelchairs. They had advocates in every day of the week. And nobody saw these. We do a routine inspections every three months. And when we walked in, it was obvious to us that they're on the wall. This was a book board. Child came home from school in June. Took his book bag off and stuck it there. In September, he pulled the book bag off to go to school. In this corner here, right this whole thing is just packed with bed bugs. Right? Simple fix. Um, run them through the dryer um, and then take care of them. You losing that there now? Dark mattress. The reason I show this.
The dark mattress, if you've got the white covers on it, makes it easier to see. The three and a half fingers is about 30 dead bucks. The uh, vanity, inside of vanity, just one by yourself. This is underneath the carpet we pulled up. <laughs> this is behind some baseboard we did. This was a miniature. I heard you guys talking about uh, Bitterford. Yeah, somebody said they have it. It's, it's all over. You guys are just as bad as Bitterford. So, <laughs> you want to be just as prepared. These are pillows people were using um, before we showed up. This guy was sleeping on that bed 15 minutes before I pulled that pillow. Ah! It was pushed up like this. He was sleeping on the face of it. When I pulled it down, that was what he had. Unreal. You know? see that he, didn't, he swore he didn't have any bed bugs. He, did, he thought he had no bed bugs at all. And I'm like, well, what do you call all this? And, oh. I find it interesting that that pillow used to be white. Yeah, this one here. Oh, yeah, yeah. See all those black spots on this? That's an indication there's something going on with that bed. And a lot of you, a lot of you are doing rescue work, that sort of thing. Um, you walk in, and you grab somebody's pillow, and you start seeing this stuff on it. There's no lot you can do at that point. You worry about it when you get back to the station. And then at that point, just roll up, throw the stuff in the dryer, uh, take a can of compressed air, dry your shoes off. Um, you've got to do your job. I mean, you can't stop and. and <laughs> Sorry, dude, you're going to die! <laughs> I can see that food rolling in the dryer right now. Boom! <laughs> this guy, uh, the property manager, uh, took everything he owned. We found him in pill bottles, uh, spice bottles. I found bed bugs and everything. His bicycle, his microwave, they were going to be. She threw everything away completely, including the clothes he had, put him in a brand new apartment, and less than eight weeks later, he infested the second. Because he would not stop picking stuff up off the side of the road. Uh, at this point, he's one of the homeless guys in Portland. This is a TV tray. Uh, this can happen because it's sitting beside that recliner in the living room. It never moves, and you get a cluster. The average home in Maine may cost you two or three thousand bucks to get it treated, to be heated, maybe a little bit more. Okay? This gentleman, was, it was two or three thousand that day. Uh, this is his calendar, daily planner, and he zips it and writes his notes. We were pack, literally packing up to leave, and one of my technicians started walking into the house with that. He would have been infested the house before we even left the yard. Um, and we, the, that's all bed bugs. And he never saw it. Everybody says, how can he miss it? Well, there wasn't one appointment that he went to that day or any day that anybody said anything to him. Nobody saw it. And this could be any salesman walking into the station. I mean, you could be any salesperson that should say, Get outside! You know yeah, you're you're outside. Yeah, we made him outside from that long, you know? Two of them. You get two here on Teddy. Uh, throw them in the dryer. Put them in a pillowcase. 15 minutes is all you need. Item. If it's just what we're wearing, 15 minutes. If it's a full load, it's a half hour. If it's whole family, Put them each in a pillowcase and stick them in the dryer. That way he doesn't flap and lose an arm or a leg or do shame it. Or he's going to the plant. Yeah. We find them everywhere. Uh, some of my biggest issues are luggage. Uh, wheelchairs are an issue for us uh, because there's so many holes, so many openings. Same thing with walkers. Uh, a lot of holes and openings. Your best advice to somebody like that that you're dealing with is take a little scotch tape and tape up the holes the other holes. They don't need them. They're adjusted for their height. Nothing's going to change um, until somebody else is using that chair. Um, they can't chew through the tape, so they're not going to get in or out. So, um, blood spots, smears on the sheets. That's what we're looking for. Cast offs, fecal matter. Um, the cast off is up in the left here. Um, the, the blood spots look like ink spots. This is a great shot. It shows all these different spots that you're looking for. Just like that pillow. That's what we're looking for. Bigger spot like this one. Right here, you can see that red thing, um, is you know, we're not stagnant sleepers. As we move around at night, we may crush one that's full of blood. It's going to leave a bigger blood spot. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Roadkill. <Yeah, right. laughs> <laughs> Mattress, it looks like old. It's all discarded blood. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you're unsure, take a wet one and wipe it. If it comes up uh, red, it's typically blood. Comes up black, typically white, or mildew, I should say. Yeah. Up top here, nice and white, no markings at all. Then you see this one. This is a rope on the side of the mattress. It looks like pepper. You know, it looks like somebody sprinkled pepper. That told me something's going on. 
as we roll it down, because these things curl, you can see it's just like a hydrogen. Now the thinking is the pitted sheet came over the top and landed between the two. And that they crawled up on the pitted sheet, would go feed and come back down to here. And nobody would see them. And if you've got a bedroom where you've got a bed up against the wall like this, and the headboard's against another wall, nobody ever looks at that side of the bed. You need to pull the bed away at 12 to 18 inches so you can walk up and down the side of the bed and check it once in a while. Um, we'll put it on wheels so you can roll it out and then push it back. Prior to us doing any kind of a service, uh, we inspect. If I'm an inspector or one of the technicians, on a good day, we're 30% effective. Not real good odds. If the dogs do it, um, they're 80 to 95. So they're a lot better than we are, but they're still not 100%. There's no 100% method to determine bed bugs at this point. These guys are probably the most effective. We've got Cassie, Bella, Jack, um, right now is uh, retired. He's getting acupuncture. He's got some kind of nervous thing on his spine. You got bit by bit Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then we've got, uh, we've got another one coming, and then we've got Chloe, uh, Layla, and Pops as backup dogs. So there's a lot of dogs now in the Northeast um, that we use all the time. So uh, These guys are uh, pretty effective. Bed dogs will travel typically 15 to 20 feet from where they feed, but they'll go 100 feet overnight. So you can have an apartment building in town that nobody's complaining, and all of a sudden you've got 12 apartments with bed bugs. And not because nobody was paying any attention, because one apartment went empty and those bed bugs went looking for food. And they'll go 100 feet in any direction. So it could be any unit. So this is why we inspect touching units. And a lot of times, roughly 28% of the time, one of the touching units already has bed bugs and they don't know. Them. So, and there are different levels of uh, um, infestations. We have what we call an introduction, and then we have an infestation. Introduction is less than 50 bed bugs. Over 50 was what we'd call an infestation. Okay. Uh, and in the thousands, that's just a heavy infestation. Hmm. Clutter, this is my biggest obstacle. And it's a, for you guys, it's the same thing. You know, you're walking to some place you can't get around. It's an issue. Uh, we need to tell people to get stuff up. This shot, the reason I have this in here is to give you a quick story. The door on the right was his bedroom. He swore he didn't have bedrooms. This guy swore up and down until less than 30 days later, he was evicted. He didn't have bed bugs. He was supposed to be ready for me to treat that day. Nowhere is near it. When we walked in the room a couple weeks earlier to inspect, I had two maintenance guys with me. They abruptly ran out in the hall and quit their job. And both of them, right there. And I walked out and I told them, within three months, I saw them at other jobs dealing with bed bugs. When we walked in, the floor looked like it was doing this. They were that late like Now his wife slept in this bedroom over here. Had one bag of clothes, this is trash, they still had food on the counter, they were nowhere near being prepared and they weren't going to do any more than they did, which was nothing. Other than she took her bed, dragged it down the hall, got on the elevator, went downstairs, lengthened the building up to the dumpster and left it out there. Then she took our loads of clothes and did the same thing. Before they could get these folks out of this building, 29 other apartments had been books. They don't have a home in Beacon. They fall off coming down the elevator or on the stairway. They're not going back up to the unit they came from. They're going to the nearest spots. Um, so this was huge. It cost this place thousands of dollars to take care of it. And every once in a while, we still have a bed bug show up. And this is about four years ago. Storage. It's an issue for us. Um, I had a property over here in Dover we were doing. Uh, Dover Housing Authority. I had a unit we had done it four or five times, treated it. Could not get any control. Then what we found out was we go in, I'd meet with the people, give them the prep, their instructions, and then the guys, different crew would show up to do the work. The house was empty. It's like, oh, there's never a problem. It worked great, you know. Well, that, they were putting stuff in storage over there, a storage place in summers. Then they were hauling it back after the treatment and reinfesting the unit. But once we found that out, they had an 8 by 10 room that was jam packed with the stuff. So, had a storage facility. This would have been a properly prepped unit, everything nice and clean, moved to the center. All the clothes would have been laundered. Nowadays, if they're hanging, we tell people to leave them. Otherwise, they have to do all the laundry. This is not a small process. And you guys are seeing that. It's not like dealing with ants. Okay. bugs. right now, we say 113 on here. Dr. Kells at the University of Minnesota is actually saying 118 now, um, before they die. The bed bug egg dies at 122, and, and it's within a minute at that temperature. 
We heat the apartments to 135 and we maintain it 48 hours. Now the issue here, and I don't know if you guys have had to deal with it yet, um, but we've seen it. These big flat screen TVs, we've seen people fold them right over, melt them. We've seen the vinyl shades melt right down the, to the counters. They're walking in and they're using salamanders and kerosene heaters, and propane tanks, uh, grills. We, you get people doing this stuff all over the place. Um, and my concern and the reason why I like doing it for you guys is you're going to run into these places and, and you're going to find some with carbon monoxide. And it's not going to be long before that happens. Somebody's going to die of carbon monoxide. The stuff that we're seeing out there is absolutely crazy. Um, you had a fire up there, or not a fire, a um, guy overheated the building up in Bitterford, set off the sprinklers. Um, I think it was the second floor about a month ago, six weeks ago. Um, we've seen all kinds of stuff. In Nashua, we walked into a guy's house and he had melted everything in the house. And he just set the heaters and left and came back the next day. So it was crazy. Um, this is huge. Um, this death rate, people need to understand it. It's a science. It's not just get the room up and you know, heat this room to, to 135 and keep it here all day. We use a lot of fans. We drive it in the corners. We monitor the sprinklers and that sort of thing. And we stay, we, we stay with it all day. Um, but this piece you need to know on your dryer. If you are dealing with bed bugs, and you guys could be any day of the week, you need to test your dryer at home. And the way you test it is take a wet towel, put it in, high heat, 15 minutes or so. Take a thermometer, an oven meat thermometer, stick it in there, don't start it, just stick it in on the wet towel and close the door. You wait about 30 seconds and then check it. It should be a minimum of 130, the temperature in your dryer. And what happens is we bought our dryers and we've used them for 8 or 10 years. They work great and all of a sudden now it's taking 15 or 20 minutes longer. We didn't notice it because it's just not the same heat. Uh, you may have burned out alone. But by knowing what your dryer, each of you, what your dryer is doing, if you deal with bed bugs tonight and you go home, you know your dryer is hot enough to throw your clothes in and you're going to kill it. If you don't know that, then you're going to be nervous. I had a lady in Westbrook did 98 loads of laundry. Found out that her dryer was only getting 110. Not hot enough to kill them. So you made them smell, but I guess not. Uh, didn't work. Your commercial dryers, um, I'm assuming you got commercial at the station. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I the, they're typically 140 to 170. Okay. Um, and if you really want to check your stuff, check that uh, lint trap before and after a load. And if you see something in it, then you'll know you had something on you. Because they'll blow right into the lint traps. They'll be dead. Okay, treatments. We typically rip the fabric off the bottom of the chairs, the furniture, so we can inspect it and treat it. We normally will dust into the outlets, the, the wall voids, uh, trying to get around the outlet and into the box a little bit. Diatomaceous earth is what we use, and we put it in an air, uh, aerosol base. And what it does is it uh, cuts them up. It makes them dehydrate. Somebody cuts them up. The uh, cuticle on a bed bug is thicker than a roach. So you know, it, it takes a lot of cutting. It's not going to... They crawl across that once, it's not going to work. I had them sitting in there for a week, crawling constantly, and they were still alive. So it's a, it's a slow process, but it helps. Uh, we use a lot of vacuums. The vacuum will not typically kill the bed bug. It will gather them up. We infested our office because we use those little the wall rechargeables, and we had to charge them in the office at night, and they were crawling out of the epithelium. Uh, that's an issue. Steaming, we use steam, but only particular items. We're not going to come in and try to steam a room like this, because typically it's going to take you hours to do it. But also, if you're using too much steam, you're just going to blow them out of the way. We use chemical. Uh, everything is left upside down after we treat chemically, because the chemicals have to run down into the cracks and crevices. They have to, to get it there. This is another system, carbon dioxide, freezing, uh, crinate, um, system. It's effective if you get on the bed bug. But if he's behind just one single paper, one sheet of paper, that bed bug will survive. Because that freezing builds up like frost in your freezer. So it insulates him. He won't kill him. But 76 below, if it hits him on contact, it'll kill him. Now the speed that he's doing and the pressure he has is probably too much. And it's going to blow him out of the way. It's like a steamer. You know, it's just going to push him out of the way. A breeze hits him first. So it's, it's a help, it's a tool, but it's not the 100%. This is 100% fumigation. That's the only way to make sure you can kill them 100%. But you have a school door in Hampshire, a little building like that. You use it as a dorm. 
Uh, a year ago, last June, spent 20,000 bucks. The first week of September, they reinvested the school. As soon as the kids got there, 20,000 gone just like that. So uh, it's not real good. But building like that, um, you're probably looking at half a million bucks to do something like that. Not cheap. You see our truck around, you know, you'll see us around town. It's a big vanilla box like that, no markings on it. We're not driving around with bed bugs hanging on the side. Hey, this house, house. It's a convection oven. Uh, we built it. It's radiant heat all the way around. We can get up to about 180 in there. We maintain 160 for three hours when we're cooking with this. Uh, it is a propane fired system. The tank sits outside of the truck. And you can see the heat uh, side. Um, it's a side panel. Uh, very effective. This is the other system we use. Up on the left there, that's the generator. That's a 40 kW. These are the heaters, these four units. Uh, they come with a dozen fans that we have. Right now, I think we have two or three hundred fans. Uh, they're like 500 bucks a whack. It's crazy. Then we use these sensors in this, uh, this box here. And we have sensors to put in all the sprinklers, all the heat alarms, so we can monitor what's going on. Because once they get to the, the 135 point, we start cooling things down. Uh, we've got to do something or we're going to kick off the sprinkler. So, uh, we use these little foil packs so if the sprinkler, oops, if the sprinkler did have to come on, um, it would blow out of the way. So, we got TVs, uh, electronics, we're not going to damage them with this type of system. This is why we use this. So you can see the heaters as big as a couch. The electric, no gas. This is another system and you guys are going to see a lot of these out there because there's a lot less money to get into. Um, Atlantic Pest, we spent over a million dollars a year ago by uh, this type of system. We've got uh, eight of them, or uh, ten of them right now, of these systems. This is uh, uh, less than half the price. It's a propane fired system outside. Big heaters, they're beautiful. They will get the heat in, 250 degrees coming through that window. The issue is, they may warp the windows if they're vinyl. Uh, and then also, inside the unit, they can't control them nearly as well, you know, with the fans and stuff. So they may delaminate cabinets and that sort of thing. Um, we've seen them set off sprinklers. They can't go above five stories. So you'll see guys trying all kinds of things. They'll put them up on the roof and try to come down and, and they'll do all kinds of stuff with these things. Um, so you just want to, I guess, be watching them. I think they're a great system. I just think they've got some work to go. Um, mattresses, uh, you got to see them out by the dumpsters or on the sidewalk. And what happens is people say, that looks better than what I got. They grab it, they take them home. Oh, yeah. We talked about the covers already. <coughs> Allergic reactions, medical. How are we doing here? Okay. Uh, medical issues. We have no reaction. Then we have an immediate reaction. And then we have a, a delayed reaction. And I've already told you about the delay. It could be almost two weeks. I told you about the no reaction, upwards of seventy percent of us. Uh, and the immediate reaction is you wilt right up as it bites and you wilt up. They itch like crazy. And this is how people get sick. In summer, or this summer in Toronto, three people got MRSA infections. Um, what happened was the bed bugs had MRSA on them. As they crawled across and left a trace of MRSA on the skin, they bit, people scratched and broke the skin open, the MRSA got in. At least that's how they're explaining it to us. So, some of the medical staff know that. It's like a staff infection. <laughs> They carry 28 diseases, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, uh, HIV, uh, 25 more diseases, okay? Um, but again, they're not transmitting. Now, I'm saying that um, with the understanding that from the 50s to today, for almost 50 years, there was no research on bed bugs because there wasn't any problem with bed bugs. So um, at some point, they may find something. Hepatitis B is a question. So they're saying they're not transporting from biting. Yeah, they're not transmitting from the bed. You're rolling around, squishing them, and well, you walk in, you got an open cup, and you walk in, and you grab a mattress, you and, and look. Yeah. So, but nothing's been said. Nobody, nobody yeah, made this like that. You got all, you got all twenty. Yeah, nobody's been able to uh, uh, determine that. There's a lot of research going on. Um, the issue is there hasn't been any funding for the research. So it's just the universities, Florida, Minnesota. Penn State, Orno's involved now. Um, uh, um, Dr. Potter's uh, group um, overseas. Um, you've got them in Australia, Canada. 
it's coming, but it's slow. These are what the bikes look like. And you guys have seen people out there like this when you show up. They're covered in bikes, they're pulling their hair up, they don't know what's going on, they itch, unbelievably itch. Um, but you can see the welting, the, the effect. This is actually, it looks like one bike, but it's actually three. Um, everybody says this looks like a tick bike. No bullseye. Just a little side note, the new science now on tick bikes is 30% of us can get Lyme disease without having the bullseye. That's, that was a year ago that came out of that. But looking at all this, it's, it's just what I told you. They're in a row or they're in a cluster. It's not going to be one here, one here, and one here. Looking at these, after everything I've told you, which of these, if any or all, would be bed bikes? Right at the top, huh? None of them. Flea bikes, chiggers, if these walking in the woods, scabies, that's an article condition. The issue is, uh, they look the same. The medical community is having a problem with this because there's no medical test today saying yes, that's a dead bug bite. What they can do that we can't is they can eliminate and say it's not a hornet, it's not a wasp, it's not a flea. They can narrow it down and make an educated guess. And the advantage is they have malpractice insurance. Right? If people are going to walk up to you, I had it happen a year ago at Christmas. I'm at the mall, two different people walked up and say, hey, are these bed bug bites? Yeah, go see your doctor. And that's really, you got to be careful because there's a lot of lawsuits going on, and it all comes back to what I said. So you got two in a row. Spiders. Spiders. Tell you that I couldn't tell you in a court of law, so we've got to be really conscious about this. We can't get into this thing here, this blame game thing. This is when we cause a lot of problems. Um, somebody will say, Listen, we didn't have bed bugs until you showed up and you brought them to the firehouse, or we didn't have bed bugs until you got them out at the house, and now I got them at my house, um, and it's your fault. We don't want to do any of that stuff. Uh, education is key, uh, but don't play this blame game, and, and you will. Come up in situations where I've seen fist bites over this stuff. Uh, it's crazy. And, and you, you probably see more of that than some of us. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, couple things you can do. Keep some pressed air around. These cans at the station. Do you guys have a, a pressed hose? Air hose? Just blow your stuff off once in a while. The station I had to do, it was the EMT bags uh, that were the issue. Uh, that's because they sit them on the bed or they sit them right next to the bed while they're working on somebody. Uh, just blow them up once in a while and check them out. It's a good thing to do. Keep an extra change of clothes in your vehicle in a Ziploc bag. A one gallon of Ziploc bag will only typically a day's change. So you can put the change into something you know is not invested. Put your old into the, the bag. Don't be sitting on chairs or beds if you, if you don't know uh, the home. Communication is key. If you know a property that's got a problem, and at any point any one of you can go in that property, communicate with each other. Say, hey, you know, we were there yesterday, they got a problem, it may not be fixed yet. You know? uh, listen to what everybody's telling you. Um, you may be concerns. Yeah, Legal yeah. issues. Uh, Motel 6, 2003. $372,000 they lost in this case. So in this case, it's 181 plus the kids each got 5000 the vice president of the, at the Motel 6 out there told his staff in writing to tell people that his bed bug problem was a tick problem, not bed bugs, because um, he couldn't afford to take care of the bed bugs. Mm. And uh, they found that out when they were doing disclosure, so how much are we going to make? Up top, JCPenney, 
This young guy was working in the store, and basically a couple bought furniture. They called the store up, said, you brought bed bugs in, we delivered it. Uh, the guy said, no, we found them, we had to follow them in the truck, get it treated, and bring us the bill. Then J.C. Penney wouldn't back him up. He goes back to what we say. You gotta be careful what we say. Um, so the, the, the lawsuits are huge. Uh, I talked to an attorney in uh, New Hampshire over a year ago, and he was getting two new cases a week at that point. So I don't imagine how many he's getting now. Uh, in 1908, the court said, listen, work it out with your landlord. hundred years later, they said, no, nope, break your lease, get out of there, you shouldn't have to live like that. This was in New York. Maine has, it has the toughest laws in the nation on that house for apartments. Um, tenant has 24 hours to report it. The landlord has five days to inspect it. Tenant has to comply with the inspection. Then he has 10 days to come up with a plan. And if the plan is we're going to use Atlantic, if I can't get there you know, in a week, maybe two weeks, uh, it could be a month before somebody gets treated. Literally. Uh, for the time they get determined what it is. Landlord is responsible for the fee the first time. If the tenant doesn't comply with the inspection or the preparation for the treatment, they can be billed for, for any future bed bugs um, in that unit. So this is big to me. Uh, we tell everybody, I don't mean to tell you guys, but you know these, these moms that people are buying, you buy a pack of three, the average house needs one can or apartment needs a third of a can. It's a full release, it's a petroleum product, it's a natural can or uh, gas that's out there. You buy the bed bug ones now too, they're the white boxes. Uh, people fire them off, house is full of gas and spark goes. Blew the wall out, Washington DC up here. Both windows got blown out, and the door and the steel frame were blown out all of <laughs> This guy left the wood stove going, and then that gas, not good move, and this was another fire. I couldn't tell you how many of the fires that are undeterminable are because of something like this. I don't know. You know? Uh, but it happens. Um, two slides and I'm done. we got to keep this test in perspective. <clears throat> Center for Disease Control says during the summer, sunlight hours, 8, 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, we spray ourselves down with some kind of off or raid or something to protect ourselves against mosquito and ticks. Because of Tripoli, West Nile, uh, Lyme disease, babiosis, we actually have malaria in Florida now. The southern part of the country is getting malaria. We'll be more. You got bed bugs. Asthmatic reaction, if there's a lot of them in the vacuum and they get airborne, cast off seeds. Secondary infection, absolutely. You scratch it till it bleeds and we infect ourselves. Simple antibiotics. Psychological effects. It's huge. Bring it right. It is. Your life will change. You'll never sleep the same. You won't be talking. This is a map of students' hand in Kentucky. We used to do this for our dogs. We'd have vials and we'd let 50 or 100 of them feed at one time. We stopped after the um, uh, MRSA thing in Toronto this year. But you see the pumping on the head? It has the body expands. This is blown up so you can see the pores of the skin. I mean, it's, you know, it's magnified. And then he just walks off. Boom! And at this point, you roll over, that's going to be a pretty good look. Spot. Yeah. Now, I told you about mattress covers. Okay? There's a device you can buy. These are kind of climb ups. They make them in different sizes. And, and these are all full of water now. I took a swim. This is a different one here. The way they work is bed bugs like to climb a vertical surface. Inside these is talcum powder, it's shaving powder. It's like baby powder, it's not hurt anybody. The bed bug crawls up the outside, they come over the top, and now they can't get out. If they're in the outer ring, it told me they were coming from away from the bed. If they're in the inner ring, it tells me they're on the bed and they're trying to get off. All right? And what happens if, it, if this was the bed, I've got one on each leg. See, that particular leg keeps showing up with bed bugs in it. I know that corner is where my problem is. It helps me narrow down where they are. If they act as a monitor, they're cheap. You buy them online. Um, I think they're four or five bucks, something like that each. Um, you do this on your bed. You do that uh, cover on there. You get rid of that dust ruffle. Pull the bed away from the wall. Your bed is going to be as safe as you're going to be able to make it. Unless you carry a bed bug on that bed. They're not going to get on. Either you carry it on or your blankets hit the floor. Because they can't get up past these things. They get in there and they can't get any traction. So, uh, these are clean bags, uh, green clean bags, alcohol based bags. 
Um, you put your laundry in it and you leave it tied, they can't get out. You just take the whole bag and throw it right in the washing machine. The water will dissolve it instantly. It breaks right down. The advantage is uh, you're not standing there shaking the clothes up and having bed bugs fly on on something else. So if you have contaminated clothes, these are the great way to go. And you need that thing you need that stuff. So. Um, I covered a lot in an hour. I try to keep it interesting. Uh, I'll answer anybody's questions if you got any. All That's right. all I've got. I was gonna say, walking into a home. Yeah. You suspect, well shit, I suspect everybody. But you suspect possibly there's bed bugs. Person invites you into the home, I want you to have a seat. Obviously I'm not gonna sit. Am I still susceptible to contract? Now, it's a great question because uh, I gotta tell you, since 97 to today, we even had five, five people infested at work. Twice with Ralph, our operations director, his daughter went and stayed with a friend, bought him home. Then the friend came over a month later and they figured out what it was. She infested his house twice. Three other guys from work. Uh, at least that's what we're gonna figure. Um, as long as you're moving, they can't get on you. They gotta crawl to get on you. It's when you, when you gotta tumble with somebody on the bed. You know, you hold them down and cuffing them or whatever. You know, that sort of thing. Or, you know, the fire department, so, you know, you're, you're lifting up a mattress and you're trying to get it out of the way. That's when it's a concern, but there's not a lot you can do about that. That's your job. You know, you got to still be able to do that. You're not going to be worried about this. It's after the issue, what do you do? At that point, grab a can of air and blow yourself off, um, you know, before you hop in the patrol car or test the car. If you know that's truly the case, yeah. um, you know, the summer heat will kill the bed bugs in the car. The winter cold will not. So keep it detailed, you know, or, or the, the trucks. The cold won't kill these things? No. No, I had them at a zero degree lab freezer. We dissect mosquitoes and bed bugs and stuff with these colleges and stuff. And uh, I had them in there for five days at zero, put them out underneath the microscope, the lamp warmed them up so they started going again. Yeah. It's got to be like 15 below for about 10 days to really kill them. So, and you know, you talk to Jim Dill at the University of Maine, he says put them in a freezer. Um, and freeze them. I've done it, it doesn't work. So. Well, they got to be in there a long time. Um, if somebody's got something really valuable, that's one way to do it. Um, the other way is to, to get it fumigated. Um, but there's not a lot of fumigation going on out there. You'd have to get a professional. So how do you, I mean, of course I apologize because I missed a good amount of this because of the calls, but so how do you notice these things to begin with? I mean, uh, either the bites. I mean, if you're not seeing the bites, typically it's going to be the blood stains or... Blood stains on them. Um, mostly on the bed or where you, where you sleep. Um, some, some guys don't sleep on the bed, they sleep on the couch. So the couch. Uh, but um, the blood stains, or you may see box. And it may be, you don't see anything until you see the box. And when you see the box, it's typically it's because you just brought them in, they haven't got established, they're exposed, or you got a population with so many that they're looking to build another population. And if they get established, they go for what, carpeting? Furniture, they'll go, they'll go into everything. Yeah. They're going to be typically 15 to 20 feet around the bed is where they want to be, close close to the bed. Um, or I don't know if you were here when we talked about the chair. You know, senior citizens. My mother-in-law yeah, uh, was 87. She spent 18, 20 hours a day in her recliner. If she had bed bugs, that's where they were. Um, and we see it a lot because they go with foods. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, rooms with babies. The crib, they got to go for the crib before they go for somebody in the bed. They breathe faster, uh, and they run a little warmer than we are, for the most part. Uh, so we find the cribs are cribs are the, the CO2. The CO2 is it? They're looking for that CO2 or carbon dioxide. Yeah, CO2. yeah, yeah. And they're looking for that. And if you really want to test at home, you know these little uh, CO2 cartridges for guns. You can buy a little uh, aerosol one. It just shoots CO2, and you hit the edges of your bed. Boy, they'll come out big time. It's amazing how it works. There's a video on YouTube of a guy using CO2 to pull out of the baseboard, and just hundreds of them coming out of the baseboard for that CO2. It tells them there's something going on. You've got people trying dry ice uh, uh, monitors. The issue that I have with that is people get, get burnt. Uh, they get burnt with the dry ice. Um, and you know, they're advertising them everywhere. You can buy the stuff online. 
Um, so it, uh, we have a concern with that one too. Um, people are uh, using all kinds of different gadgets. Uh, there's actually a woman up the coast that used uh, cedar oil. She was buying it online from California and about 200 bucks a gallon. Uh, and before we got in the house, we could smell it. Uh, and when he went in the house, Ralph went in the house, uh, it, was, it, it was making him sick. Uh, our house basically has no value because you can't get it out. It's like uh, you know, a cedar closet. And once it's there, it's there. Uh, and it, it's going to be some cleanup for that. But um, she was putting it down every day. People don't operate by the way. So there, there's a lot of concerns for, I think, for your jobs. Uh, and, and the different scenarios you're going to get to is a lot of times you're going to go into a situation where somebody's got bed bugs and they're trying to treat it themselves. And the reason you're there is because what they did is set off sprinklers or set you know, they got fire. They're using a salamander. I got a guy in vinegar. He's done it twice in three weeks. Firing off a salamander in his apartment. Because that's how you kill them, right? You heat it? We use electric heat. Up to a certain, what does it have to get to? We go 135. The surface on the wall may get to 150. The inside of the wall will get to around 127. Inside, we use meat thermometers to monitor the walls. And we, and we use sensors and everything. But yeah, 135 is where, and then we maintain that for the duration of the heat. How long does it have to go? Like Four that? to eight hours at that temperature. So, Typical heat, we start at eight. Bed, everything, all that has to be. Oh, yeah, it's got to get the core of all of it. Yeah, we use a lot of fans. The average home could use uh, eight heaters. And, and 20 or 30 fans to get it all the cracks, crevices. Now, what about like new couches, new beds? That stuff, typically, uh, I wouldn't worry unless it's being delivered by the company. So you know, they haven't found them like coming from other countries in no, the plastic. No, absolutely, yeah, for sure. In the plastic in the beds? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Brand new mattresses still wrapped in plastic, they'll be already inside. Uh, we did a, um, a warehouse that had 18 cases. Well, actually, they had 96 pallets that they wanted us to inspect. So they rented a separate warehouse, laid everything out like movie seats. We went through and we found 18 uh, boxes with bed bugs. This was medical tubes they used to fill with like um, ointments and stuff. You know, they're manufacturing all there. After we got done, they told us where they came from. Half were from Sweden, the other half were from China. And this was last spring. Last week. Yeah, and they just floored me. It's like, oh yeah. So, you know, we're not the heaviest. Uh, Australia is the worst with bed bugs. Their, their numbers are the highest. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the warmth. But, I don't know, you know, you remember your parents um, as kids. You know, you pull the mattresses outside and beat them in the spring. You know, and they say, oh, it's airing it out. You're not supposed to air it out. You're knocking the bed bugs off. You know, that was, and people lived with them back then. Um, in, uh, Africa, Somali, um, one of the things they do, literally, is in the spring, uh, they pull them out and uh, let the sun cook them, uh, you know, in the heat. Uh, in Afghanistan, um, some of the guys that are coming back said the same thing. They're pulling the stuff out and, and beating them and, and doing that thing and then pulling them back. So, it, some people have learned to live with them and our tolerance level just isn't there. So, and you will find people, landlords, right at it. Don't read that. Um, and, and that happens a lot. I don't know if I answered your question. I thought I got it wrong. Um, no, you uh, kind of did. So, uh, would you recommend, like, I'm thinking about the fire stations, for example. I mean, we got, you know, there's what, 40 different people that could be sleeping in any of the beds that, that we have. Yeah. You know. I would uh, recommend. They're occupied every night, and we're running into people's houses all the time. Should we have these things on all our mattresses? Absolutely. Those in the cups. Because the what, then we can monitor what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, the fire station I did, one of the guys had him at his house, and he couldn't afford to get him treated, so he was trying to do it himself. And this was going on a couple months. Then they had him at the fire station where he was sitting. It happens. And I'll tell you which one. Oh, really boy. Um, yeah. I mean, those, those things work pretty good. Let me get back to the heat piece. These are the heaters we use. They're 460 volt electric heaters, 9,000 watts. Um, and their they're, they're, <coughs> they're heat uh, limit is set at 135. Um, we could up it if we had to, but the limit set at 135. 
So it's a pretty safe system, the stun rate. Um, we have more injuries just looking at this. So like people's electronics and stuff like that. You don't have to empty the house out. No, no, not at all. We'll leave everything. Leave everything there. You just got to do the laundry or hang it up. It's quite. It, it's a process. It's not a simple fix. And then what we do is we go back 30 days later and we inspect with the dog. And if we find them, we we do the second one on us. Um, and about six percent of the time, we don't get it the first time. So we have to redo it. Um, but for fire stations, the recommendation is absolutely mattress covers, those cups, uh, and um, uh, routine inspections. Either visual, train you guys how to do your own inspection, or have us come down and do the dog inspection. And so to inspect, like, before I make my bed tonight, you know, <laughs> lift the mattress up, look underneath it. Yep. That's so it. You look, no, you're looking at all, all the edges, you're looking underneath the label, the flap, and, and they're small. So you got has the fabric that rope, you know, and this is why having the covers on eliminates a lot of the search time. The rope where that little flap of excess materials, you got to look underneath that. Don't look for the box. Look for the, the blood. Um, Trans. Yeah. Look for where is it? Here. This stuff. Look for this stuff. These black spots. That's what you're looking for. See how nice and white the top one is. You gotta look at every rule. Right. Um, I don't know what, how do you guys do it? You've got blankets and sheets, or do you use sleeping bags? Blankets and sheets. Yeah. We're yeah. yeah. sort of sort of sheets. We've got it. Everyone has their own blankets and pillows. Yeah. At some point, uh, we should look at uh, mattress encasements for the beds. And, and seriously, um, give me a call as you're shopping, um, because I, I, we don't uh, charge anything but cost on uh, fire stations. So, um, you guys can't help us. You gotta, you gotta have you guys around. Police guys, well, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll see you. What was that, Atlantic? That's right. What was that, Plate number? There you go. What are you making out of the back? What are you making out of the back? Yeah, you wanted to stop him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want the infestation. <laughs> Don't get any closer. <laughs> Just keep in mind, we're in these things every day. You know, in 14 years, we've only taken them home five times. And literally, um, we're into tens of thousands of apartments every time. And homes um, at this point. Um, we haven't done a lot of grocery stores and restaurants. We've done a few, a few churches and movie theaters. But most of it's residential. Did you tie back? Tie back uh, we don't. Uh, oh. Unless it's health risk. You know, and, and, uh, for... Um, other conditions, you know, um, fecal or filth or something like that. Yeah, I, I just had one of those today. It's the, the guys have to go into the respirators. So. so normally, with your clothes, if you yeah, wear them. Well, yeah. If I'm if I'm doing yeah. inspections, I go in not with dark pants. I go in with beige pants, light colored clothes. So yeah. So if I get them on me, I can see. Them. Um, yeah, and then I then use the air and blow them off. Yeah. And and you can't keep a can of compressed air in the car. You know, on a cold day, it's not going to do any good. You know, it, it, it just, it, it's not there until the heat gets hot. So, um, so it's a little tougher, you know, and you can't, you know, you, part of your uniform is dark pants, so it's a little tougher. Um, but just, I change, uh, I change at work. Yeah. I change into my own clothes. Before you go? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. In that case, throw so most <laughs> things in a zip, uh, ziplock bag, and then um, when you get home, throw them right in the dryer. It's 15 minutes before you even wash and dry. Okay. Uh, yeah, nothing has to stay. Got a one big size spoon, basically. Just kidding. Will it pull a dryer or a washer dryer cycle normally? Will that? No washer. No washer. No washer dryer. Dryer. Just dry. It. Yeah, the dryer. The dryer will um, at high heat. Fifteen minutes of what we're wearing. It's a full load, a half hour. And my Dr. Potter's group, at the University of Kentucky, says wash and dry. But my feeling is is. Most of us, the hot water is not going to stay hot long enough in that dryer. It's going to cool down too much before it even fills it to kill it. So now you've got just wet bed bugs on the inside of the tank. Yeah. Well bathed bed bugs. Yeah, yeah. and they're, they're going to go out. Now they're just pissed off. <laughs> yeah, and, and his thinking is the soap, the, the uh, soap film on the top of the water is keeping them below it. And, and these guys aren't going to drown. Those little vials I have over there, these things, this is uh, alcohol. And we put them in here live, and four hours later they're still alive. And it, it takes a while for them to die. 
Yeah. 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 So if we run into him on a call, I used to recommend blowing off with the hand of compressed air. Yeah. Just they can't grab real well, so just blow your shoes and stuff off. They're not normally going to get up here unless you're holding up a mattress and crawling down your arm. I've had them bite my hands. So they don't jump, they crawl. They have to crawl. And you know, yeah. Your chances of bringing fleas back are oh, higher yeah. than bringing bed bugs back. Because those guys are jumping right on in. So, uh, it's not true 100% of the time, but it seems like a coincidence that most of your pictures are cluttered departments. Yeah. Clutter is big. Right, so I'm saying it's not 100% of the time, but it seems like a lot of your pictures are Yeah. <laughs> um, and I really wish I'd thrown up that operating room because that wasn't cluttered. You know, when we got them in there. That would have been an introduction. The clutter uh, issue allows them to get infested because you don't see them until you have huge numbers. By that point, they're in the walls and everywhere else. Well, I can um, understand that. That guy that we picked up on Island after the guy said, he was at the OR. We went up to move him to the helicopter. They had just cut his clothes. They were still all underneath him in the OR. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing a hospital and I'm doing uh, the maternity ward. I had some rooms I was treating in the maternity ward. And while we were there, we got a call. The ambulance that just brought somebody in was heavily infested as well as the guy they just brought in. It was covered in them. Um, so they infested the ambulance, got her in the, uh, in the emergency room, and infested that emergency room. So they had to take them both offline until they got treated. And then they had to take all these clothes to get them out of the building and buy them, buy them clothes to do it. While I'm treating four other rooms there. So, so they built their own heat chamber uh, in the hospital. There is a device you guys can buy um, they make a, a pack type, they call it. It's like a huge duffel bag. That's a heater. Um, it's great for EMT bags. You can put it in and just let it go for four hours. It'll heat them up to 150 and um, There's another one called a closet. Um, the, the, the pack type um, is about 329 bucks. The closet's about 650, something like that. Um, and it's a little taller, but you can actually hang um, uniforms up. So you can hang them up and let it do it. Um, you know, but the, my, I guess my thing with the closet is if, if I got some big items, maybe, but I think that little pack that I think works pretty good for uh, small emergency bags and that sort of thing. How about you get your electric bike? I'm going to plug it out. The thermostat at South Station will be 107 and this bike is going to be 162. <laughs> I appreciate you coming. I got all kinds of literature up.